Hey everyone, Frank from the Old Town Coleman Center. I'd like to have a discussion with you today concerning Coleman safety, particularly one part of the lantern or stove that it's easiest for you to make a mistake with, and that's the fuel filler cap. So hold on, we'll be right back after this word from our sponsors. Welcome back. First thing I'm going to do is show you a few Coleman fuel filler caps. I have a few here and we'll discuss them. Then I'm going to show you on this 242C lantern here what I'm talking about it being so dangerous and a few things that you can do to make it a whole bunch less dangerous. And then finally I'm going to uh, end the video with showing you how to replace a fuel filler cap. So let's look at some of these that we have here. Uh, most lanterns that you have find today out in the wild are going to have a cap that looks like one of these two. This one has a hole in the side. That is a pressure relief hole. And this is a very dangerous cap. You will find this on most Coleman lanterns and stoves that were made prior to 1963-64 time frame. Um, that one is very dangerous because when you release, when you unscrew it from the fount or the tank, and the pressure releases, it comes out the side of that hole. And if it's uh, pointing up towards the burner or into the flame of the stove, then it can ignite it. And it's very dangerous. This cap looks just like it, but you'll notice it does not have the holes in the side. Rather, this cap has four little channels inside that are grooved out. This is called a Playman cap. And when you unscrew this to release pressure, rather than coming out the side hole and going out in the direction it's pointing, the pressure will come out one of these or all four of those channels and be directed away from the burner, which is a much safer way of doing things. This cap came out in about 1963-64. The patent for this was filed for in 1964 and finally approved in 1967. If you go to my website at oldtowncoleman.com, under the safety portion, there is a discussion on fuel filler caps, and you can actually read the patent information on that, this filler cap. So in 1970, Coleman came out with this. This is a one-piece fuel filler cap, and you'll notice it does not have the insert in the center screw in it which is a little bit safer because pressure can be released out from under this screw. But you also notice it has the four channels inside and it does not have a side hole. These are the main three filler caps that you will find out there. This is a brand new replacement filler cap. It is just like this one. They've been this way since 1970 and it has the four uh, channels in the inside and no center screw. So this filler cap here is from a sear stove from the late 1960s, early 70s. And this is a filler cap that came off of a 242BX lantern that was made in the mid-1940s during the war. Now they look identical, but there's one significant difference. This one has no hole in the side nor does it have the channels in there of a Playman cap. This is the most dangerous cap that you could possibly have. It has absolutely no way for it to release pressure. So once you unscrew this thing, the pressure is going to go wherever it can first, and you will have no control or hope of directing that pressure in any way you want. That one's very dangerous. This is much safer. Uh, this cap is a completely different style cap. This came off in 1946 uh, number 129 lamp and you can see it has the side hole in it. This filler cap came off a 1920s Coleman quick light lamp 
model CQ. And as you can see, there are no holes or anything in this one. This little guy here came off an iron, a Coleman iron from the 1930s, and you can see that it has no hole in the side either. There is no way for this to release pressure. This one came off a 242 lantern, and it has the hole in the side with no, no slots cut into the inside. Uh, this filler cap is uh, common on 242, 243 lanterns, number 500 stoves. That's where you'll find these filler caps. Unfortunately, Coleman does not make a replacement cap for these. So if you have one of those appliances, you must use uh, a replacement filler cap gasket. So that's what they all look like. It's, it's important for you to understand what you're dealing with when you have a stove. I have always and always will recommend that if you can, when you actually go to use a lantern or a stove, that you use a replacement cap. They are safer than any of the others here. And if you want to display it, then go ahead and use the cap that matches your lantern that it originally came with. But if you're actually using it, please use one of these. They're much safer. Let me show you what I was talking about and what these things can do. I'm going to get the, my beautiful camera lady wife up here a little bit closer, and I'm going to show you. Uh, this 242 lantern, I filled it. It is full all the way to the top, and I have maximum pressure in it. So if I was to just innocently unscrew that cap, let's see what happens here. Coleman was sued over that. They claim it shot 12 feet into a campfire and ignited and burned up, burned a little girl pretty badly. If I was to take this, this lantern, by the way, it's full of water, not fuel. I didn't spray fuel everywhere. So if you have a lantern, um, if it's been burning for a while, it's going to be hot and you definitely want to release the pressure as safe safely as you can. So what you would do is always tilt the lantern away and put the filler cap at the top. That way when I release this I'm not going to get any fuel. I may get a little fuel and air mixture but it's mostly going to be air coming out. So you would want to do like that. All the fuel is as far away as possible from the filler cap. So if you do that and you do it when your lantern is cold and you don't have any flames around that's as safe as you can do it. Same thing with the stove. If this stove tank was full, uh, the way I would want to do it is hold it on the edge with the filler cap at the top and then unscrew it like that. So if you remember to do that, you should be good to go. These are the fuel filler cap gaskets that you can buy. Um, I recommend buying them from oldcolemanparts.com. Well, I know they're sized properly and they fit properly. You can buy them off of eBay from a number of sellers who admittedly do it by hand uh, in their, their own shop. And it's, if you want to take that chance, that's fine. These are machine cut and they are precision cut made out of Viton. And that is uh, it resists fuel, so they're not going to dry up and crack on you. Um, I also noticed there's somebody on eBay that sells O-rings. Ladies and gentlemen, this insert is not designed to hold an O-ring. That is for a flat gasket, and that is exactly what you need to put in there. There are people on eBay selling O-rings. Please do not buy them. They are very dangerous to put in here. They don't fit properly. They can fall out, and they're just they're not correct. What you want is one of these. So what I can do now is I will show you how to replace these. Uh, again, if you have a 242 like this in the small cap, Coleman doesn't make the replacement uh, modern 
safer ones. So what you have to do is replace it with this cap. What we want to do is we need to take this old cap that's been in here for a long time, burn it out, get it nice and crispy so we can uh, take a, a dental pick, get down in there and get all of it out, brush it out, and then the new gasket will fit right in there. So what we want to do is you can do this outside or I have a fire brick. A fire brick, I stole this from my wood burning stove when I replaced all the bricks. I just kept this broken one. Um, always have your fire extinguisher nearby. I know mine is within arm's reach. It's right behind me, so you didn't have to show them that. But anyway, um, I'm going to do is get this thing nice and hot and get that thing to burn out of there. I'm going to put on my safety glasses because this rubber can pop and it's very hot when it comes out of there. So, if you don't have a fire brick or something to do this with, you can always take it outside on gravel or something. I'm just going to set it down there and get it nice and hot. You're heating up brass, so don't worry about getting the brass too hot. That's not going to happen. You can see it's cracking and squirming like an old snake. So you can, it's a little bit cleaner if you just let it set for 15 minutes or so and cool down, but just to save time, I'm going to go ahead and stick it in water. Cool it down. Let's dry it off a little bit now. And I'm going to take a dental pick and just pick the center out. You want to get these grooves clean the inside edge and the outside edge because you need the new filler cap gasket to sit down in there nice and flat in its seat. Okay, once you get that done, take your new gasket. By the way, these are the three uh, size gaskets that I used to sell, and I believe that Mike still does. Um, this is for your uh, 220 size lantern, your common like this. Uh, the smaller one is for the 242 size and the 500 uh, stoves. And this is for the uh, old quick lights. This is called a 427 gasket. Uh, I don't have one here, but it's a kind of has little wings on the side of it that's what that fits for one of these will not fit in it so what you want to do is just take your gasket and lay it on the inside like this and gently work it in um, you don't want it to roll on you if it does you have to take it back out and try again but you just want to work your way around all the way around and get it to set on the inside nice and snug and then the outside edge of the insert itself is beveled as you can see and it needs to fit down inside of there without rolling so here is our gasket sitting inside of a an insert okay so what we do here sometimes these are a real bear to get out um, what you want to do is get tighten it as much as you can with your fingers. Take a nice screwdriver, one that fits well in the slot, and try to give it a turn. Uh, if it starts slipping and you can tell that it's not turning, you have to tighten this down a little bit more. You can take some channel locks and be very gentle to tighten it up even more. But sooner or later, it'll come out. It may give you a pop when it does. I've had this one out before, so it turns pretty easy. So you just take the center screw out. and then take the cap off and there's your insert okay so
So what I would want to do is take my new insert with the new gasket and put it on and just push it on there like that. And put your cap over the top of it and just turn it a couple times. It's got to be nice and sloppy so this can line up with the hole and, and get the threads in there properly. Like that. Then you can tighten your screw down a little bit more. Take your cap or your screw and tighten it down. And you'll notice that there is a small gap in between the top of the cap and the bottom of the screw. That is intentional. It's supposed to be there. That way it has a little bit of room to move uh, when you put the cap down. So that's a quick discussion on Coleman safety in the filler cap gasket. Remember, fire and flame only a few inches apart, what can go wrong, right? Always think ahead of what possibly could go wrong and be prepared for it. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. You can find a continued discussion on my website under safety at www.oldtowncoleman.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. Thank you again. Until next time, keep them burning.